Kapitel. Thanks, Dick. Yes, yeah, so the, the title is a bit vague, um, and I will tell you later what's it about exactly. You, you can see the, the androids here, my graphical skills, uh, uh, that's all I can do. It's, it's about dating uh, with Android apps, kind of. So first, a little bit about me. Why, why can I tell you about this stuff? Because I'm an Android developer, and I've been doing Android for a long time. Uh, I'm also uh, one of the core contributors to K9 Mail, which is an email client for Android, and it has quite a large user base. So I'm familiar with uh, what, what people request from popular Android apps. Um, I, I also uh, sometimes help at these events, so I can fill my, my uh, slide with, with cool stuff, you know, co-organizer for. Um, but really, the, the other guys here are, are the ones that are doing the real work. I just sleep in, come late, and do stuff. Um, okay, this talk. Um, dating Android apps. Um, what I want to tell you about is uh, what, what makes Android for me really great is um, sorry the, the integration uh, between apps. So you can write an app and really have uh, tight integrations with other apps, use uh, functionality provided by other apps. And uh, to do that, you of course have to do a little bit of extra work. It doesn't come for free just because you write an Android app. Um, but it's uh, really one of the cool things uh, you can do when you write Android apps, as opposed to some other mobile operating systems. OK. Um, Let's start with application components. That's basically the, the stuff you can implement to write apps on Android. Um, and if you, was, uh, if you were in the, the, the Android workshop, you probably know activities, but probably not the other ones. Um, that's not that important. I will, will tell you later a bit about them. Um, but those are the basic components. The important thing is you can also use components from other apps. So um, if, if you decide you, you want to write uh, some component and you want to expose it to other apps, that's very easily possible. And that's what this, this talk is about. Um, first, let's, let's have a quick uh, recap about what intents are, because for the uh, first uh, two and the last uh, component, intents are really important. Um, so you should at least have a uh, understanding what, what they are. The documentation says, uh, says, an intent is an abstract description of an operation to be performed. That basically means it's just a container for some data, and uh, when an app receives it, it decides what to do based on the content in uh, that, that object. <coughs> an uh, intent contains uh, an action that's basically, uh, dear app, please do this and that. Um, a, a data field, which is just a URI, so you can uh, point to some, some other kind of data. Uh, this can be a, a website, so a HTTP URI, or uh, some internal stuff. We will learn more about that later. Um, an intent also contains a type, which is just, just the, the basic MIME type, so give me uh, images, or give me HTML pages, or uh, contacts, whatever. Um, intents can also have extras where you can just uh, put some data in it. You can only use simple data types, which is not exactly true, but l let's just leave it at that for the moment. Um, so you have this uh, intent structure, which is just data that's interpreted by the um, uh, components in an Android application. <coughs> The first component I want to talk about, and which probably everyone knows who, who's done basic uh, Android development, uh, is an activity. So again, the documentation states an activity is a single focused thing that the user can do. So um, that's basically a, a thing that has a user interface where you can click buttons and do stuff. Um, and if you write an app, you cannot only um, 
move from one activity to another in your own app, you can also integrate activities from other apps if those other apps have done some extra work and allow you to do that. Um, y there, there are basically two ways to, to uh, start an activity of another app. You can just say, display an activity that, for example, can send mail. So you have a button in your app that says uh, send mail to developer and um, in that case you'd say, you, you'd create an intent that says uh, I, I want to, to send uh, something to uh, and then the email address goes in the URI field with a mail to uh, URI um, and then whatever app provides that functionality will be started hopefully or you will get an exception if there's none, but who has an Android phone who doesn't, that doesn't have an email client? Right. Um, so the, the other way is you, you start an activity um, from another app and you do something and you want something to be returned to you after this uh, other activity is done. Uh, then you use start activity for result, you do this stuff and it will return some other stuff uh, for example, if you uh, have an email client and uh, you want to pick some kind of content, you can first decide, okay, which app do I want to use? Um, for example, the image gallery. Uh, the image gallery will present you with a view of all your images. You can pick one and uh, information about that image is returned to you and you can uh, send it as an attachment. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, you have to do some, some extra work to make your own activities available to other apps. Um, uh, you can do that by either specifying an intent filter in, in your manifest for the activity you want to expose. Uh, that basically just, uh, just says, um, I can handle, uh, in the example, I can handle the, uh, the, the action send and uh, I can, uh, provide uh, a content of, of the mentioned uh, file types, so that's plain text and uh, images. Um, the other way is uh, you, if you don't uh, supply an intent filter, your, your activities are private by default, so other apps can't use them, but if you have the um, attribute exported, you just say, okay, uh, external apps can, can also use this activity. Uh, when, when that's important, we will we'll see later. Uh, usually, uh, if you want to expose uh, activities, you want to specify an intent filter because other apps shouldn't just say, okay, I want the specific activity of Gmail in here. They just say, I want an activity that does the stuff I want to do. Uh, and let's say, it has to be Gmail or something like that. <coughs> okay, and that's it basically about uh, activities. There are lots of things to consider, but I just want to give a broad overview of w what's possible with, with all the components and integration with other apps. If, if you really want to do this, you uh, need more information and the, the Android documentation is, is rather good. Um, and if you need help, I'm, I'm always available. I, I uh, want developers to, to make their, their apps uh, available or components of apps available for, for use by other apps. So I'm, I'm happy to help uh, where I can. The next component I want to talk about uh, is uh, the service. A service is basically a component which does some work in the background, where in the background means doesn't have a user interface. Um, and of course, this can also be used uh, across uh, process boundaries, so uh, you can call functionality from, a s from an application other than your own. Um, yes, uh, so th there are lots of ways to use a service. The, the one I want to um, limit myself in, in this talk is the um, the, the bind service interface, so you, you bind to a service and you can call methods uh, of that remote service and get some information back, maybe. Okay, um, the, the way to do this is 
um, the app that wants to provide the functionality creates an uh, AIDL file. AIDL stands for Android Interface Definition Language, I hope. Um, and you basically say, okay, this, this is my interface, my iRemote service, and I have the following three methods. Uh, and then you specify which uh, data types uh, there are, and uh, you can, well, you ha also have to specify uh, if, if it's an input or output uh, argument. In the last line you see set callback in, uh, and then so on. That means uh, you, you pass in a call, uh, callback uh, object uh, to the set callback method, but you don't expect uh, this object to be modified and returned to your own process. Because what, what Android does in the background with, with all its magic, um, it copies the, the, the data you provide as arguments to the, n to the re remote process. So the other app, of course, runs in an another process, not in yours. So if it crashes, only their app crashes, not yours. Um, but for remote calls to work, you have to copy the data there. It has to operate on the data. And if uh, the data was modified and you want those modifications back, it has to be copied back. So uh, as an optimization, you don't copy everything back, just the stuff that has an out uh, modifier in, in the arguments. And of course, the return value is always copied back because why return it if you don't want it back? Okay, um, you can really uh, do really powerful stuff with this interface. Um, sadly, there, there are not many apps I know of uh, that are open source and use this interface. I have listed a, a, a few examples here. One of my favorites is the Dash Clock widget. Uh, I don't know if you know it. Uh, it's basically a widget that you can place on your lock screen or home screen. That's not terribly interesting. It just displays a, a watch, so the, the current time, which is not terribly exciting, but it has an extension mechanism. So uh, you can write extensions and uh, display information uh, below the, the time. Um, there are lots of extensions to display current weather information, uh, a stock ticker. There's an extension to display the current start date, and you can select which Star Trek uh, serious time you want. Uh, of course, there are also useful uh, extensions, for example, the number of 100 uh, emails uh, and stuff like that. So if you turn on your phone, you see this list of extensions, and it uses exactly that mechanism to, to get the information from the extensions, uh, puts it into its own process, and displays it. So. Um, as, as uh, written on the slides, if, if you know of any other apps, please let me know because uh, that's a really pow uh, powerful interface and I want to tell people more about it. I will probably make an in-depth talk about this. If you're interested, uh, let me know and I will tell you uh, when I will tell people more about that. <coughs> the next component um, Android uh, provides uh, is called Content Provider. And uh, a service is mainly for, for calling methods, so doing stuff. A content provider is providing data to you or allows you to store uh, data to uh, the content provider. Um, also, this component can be used in your app, so you can use this functionality internally. But really, um, it's useful when you use it across applications. Uh, think about uh, an email application. If you have extensions that want to uh, display the list of messages, say in a, a, um, a widget on the home screen, you don't have to uh, implement that functionality in the email client. You can just expose a content provider and say, um, I have this data, I, I give it to you, um, and, and you can display it on your own. So you can write a, a widget that displays um, the, the message list uh, of an email application, even though it, it's uh, not the same app. Um, the content provider m is mainly used for uh, providing access to data in a structured way. 
So uh, think like, like a table in the SQL database. Um, it also supports um, writing binary blobs in a streaming fashion. So you can write large attachments or, or read. Um, this is heavily used when, uh, when using activities that return a result. Um, I mentioned before, uh, there, there's a, the data type that, that gets a URI, and there's a special URI for um, content providers I will tell you about in a minute. <coughs> and that's used to give back information. Uh, hey, the user selected this uh, image from the image gallery, and you don't return the complete image in the intent you sent back, but uh, you send a URI, and the application has to talk to the other application again and say, okay, uh, the user just told me, uh, no, the app just told, you just told me, you being the other app, the user selected the following fi file, now I, I want the file. And you won't get a pointer to the actual file, but a uh, pointer to the content provider that provides the file. It's a bit complicated, but this way you don't have to have a permission to access the file storage if that's not critical for your app. You just uh, get the, the content uh, you want from the other app. <coughs> There's also a nice mechanism to uh, notifi notify you of changes. So. Uh, if, if there's an app that exposes some kind of data that changes, um, you can get notified and if you display this data as another app, uh, you can request an update and as soon as the data changes, uh, you display the updated list. Okay, so a bit more about this mysterious URI. Uh, it's always prefixed with content because it's a content provider. Um, you have an authority, which is just the, the next part in the URI. In the example here, it's the one that ends in message provider. And this um, identifies which uh, content provider to use. So this is a globally unique name, um, which is why you should prefix it with your package name. If you, have, um, if you reuse an authority someone else uses, your app won't be installed if the other app is installed. So Android will tell you, no, there can only be one authority for this. Otherwise, uh, Android doesn't know which uh, content provider to use if you give it uh, a URI like this. <coughs> okay, the, the path is uh, everything uh, after the, the third slash, I guess. Uh, in this example, inbox messages, and that's basically application defined. Uh, you, you can have as many as you want, and uh, yeah, if uh, an app requests this, it gets all the messages in the inbox. This is an example from K9 Mail. So you can actually get a message list. <coughs> so a bit more about the structured data. Um, it's a CRUD interface, which web developers will know. Um, you have to create, retrieve, update, and delete methods. So you can insert data, you can uh, query data, uh, update, or delete it all you want. And uh, I mentioned the, the structured things. So uh, like here, you have uh, different columns and uh, that, that are of different types. Uh, and then you have rows of data. In this is example, not very interesting data. The notification mechanism I talked about before. Um, yeah, I guess I said everything there is to say. Notifications are cool. You want your data to be fresh, so uh, uh, your content provider should use them. Um, it, it's not done uh, automatically. You, you need to call those methods if you modify data. Ideally, you only modify data uh, using the content provider, so it's the job of the content provider to uh, create those notifications. <coughs> okay, there are also some examples for this. Uh, there are a bit more applications that expose a content provider to um, expose all kinds of data to uh, different apps. Um, Sadly, the Gmail apps only, uh, app only allows you to, 
to retrieve the list of labels, which is n not terribly useful. Well, if, if you want to select a label and say, okay, no, I don't know. You can filter notifications by label, but... Okay, k mail is much cooler because some cool people write k mail. Um, and we expose the, the message list and stuff like that. Uh, Android is full of content providers, so uh, basically all interesting data that's uh, part of the, the Android framework is exposed via content providers. Contacts, uh, the calendar, uh, call log, uh, text messages, um, basically have a look at almost everything under the namespace Android provider, uh, content provider exposes some kind of data. There's another component that's not really useful if you use it locally, so um, this is meant for, for cross-application communication. Uh, it's called Broadcast Receiver, and it does pretty much what the name implies. It receives broadcasts, uh, and uh, basically every app can, can send broadcasts. Uh, a broadcast... Uh, when you send a broadcast, you send an, an you create an intent object and send that, and everyone that's listening uh, receives that intent. Um, they are intents for all kind of stuff. Uh, Android uses it internally. You get an intent when the time changes, so you don't have to you know set an alarm when when the minute changes. You you get a you can just listen to the. Uh, intent, the, the, the broadcast intent. When an SMS is received, you, you get a broadcast. Um, th there's a special intent uh, that is sent when the boot, uh, when Android boot is complete. So uh, if you hook that, that's th the evil thing some apps do so they can start after boot. People usually don't like that, but for some apps it's necessary. Um, you get it for all kinds of event, uh, connectivity change, when, when an email is received, um, and if you write an app that exposes some data and you're not using the um, content provider framework that also provides notifications, you probably want to send a, a broadcast intent so other apps know when something happened that they are interested in. Okay, so that's basically the, the four application components, uh, the, the basic application components uh, Android provides. They all can be used uh, across apps and you should use them across apps because that's cool and that makes a Android really interesting. Um, but sometimes you, you need to know which component you want to talk to exactly because you don't want to uh, hard code say, uh, I only want to talk to, to certain apps, but sometimes you want to say, I have this nice little interface and I allow everyone uh, to use it. Um, or you can say, uh, I'm a dash clock widget, I support uh, extensions, and on some screen you want to list all the extensions there are, so users can uh, click a setup button or configure the um, extension, and for that you, you need to know who the extensions are. Of course, you can't just put a list in your app and say, okay, these are the extensions I support, but you want to say, if they implement my interface, uh, I want to list them. To do that, you use the package manager and the, um, the intent filter element. Um, so you can say, um, give me all uh, services that uh, say they support the intent, action, I'm a happy plugin. And then Android will go uh, through all apps, uh, go into the manifest, uh, and look up if uh, there's any service that supports this interface, and will give you back a nice list. And then you can, um, for example, as listed here, receive some metadata. They also put in the manifest. This is an example from the dash clock widget. Uh, as metadata you provide which protocol version you support, which is important, and you also tell it, okay, um, I can be configured. I'm, I'm not just displaying the, the start date from Star Trek. I can also be configured to display it 
from the original series, uh, then you need a settings activity. In order for uh, Dashlog widget to find this, uh, you specify the name here. That's one of the rare cases where, um, in this case, Dashlog widget uses an explicit intent to uh, open an activity because it exactly knows what activity it wants, uh, not just some that says it's a configuration activity, but it has to match the plugin you're currently trying to configure. Okay, of course, there are many other, uh, there's m more functionality in, in Package Manager that's very useful. Um, but that's also the stuff for another talk. Um, what I didn't talk about uh, before, but what's really important, um, is uh, protecting the components you expose. For example, if you say, uh, uh, expose uh, the message list or the contents of email messages. You don't want every app installed to be able to access that. Uh, you want apps that want to access the mail to request uh, a, s a certain permission at uh, install time. So you don't want to give every app the permission to read the email. Um, the basic uh, rule is if, if you expose some kind of data that can't be retrieved by the app in some, some uh, way of its own, um, you, you should protect it by permission. So if you need some kind of login uh, to retrieve the data, protect it by permission. Um, if you ex expose some kind of functionality, um, y you have to remember you now created a public API um, you probably want to update it at some later point, so you need to put in version information so the other apps know, okay, uh, I know how to handle this version and this version. If it's something else, we can display an error message and not try to use it. Um, and if you make some kind of mistake when, when doing that, you're, you're not only, you know, messing up your own app, you will make a, a lot of people angry because all the plugins or extensions for your app also break. I've, I've been there, it's, it's not good. Um, so yeah, also always keep that in mind. And <laughs> a special pet peeve of mine, if, if you implement support from, from some kind of uh, intent action, for example, uh, when you want to send an email, be sure to read the official documentation to know what Extras are supported, you know, for uh, those are additional uh, recipients, so the CC or the BCC field or stuff like that. Um, th there's a lot of bad advice on Stack Overflow, and just because it works in Gmail doesn't mean it's implemented according to the specification. So, yeah, please look up how it's done correctly. <coughs> okay. Um, if, if you uh, can still follow me, uh, there's a, a short summary of uh, what I've talked about. Um, basically, we, we have to remember there are four uh, Android application components, uh, and if you want to have some kind of user interface using activities, either uh, provide the functionality you want other apps to be able to use uh, by exposing an activity or you just um, display an activity that says it supports some kind of action or the special data. Um, if, if you want to trigger some kind of action uh, of another um, process, you're using uh, some kind of service interface. Uh, this will also allow you to exchange data, um, but if you really want to uh, exchange data uh, on, a, on a larger scale. Uh, you want to use a content provider. It also allows you to read and write data. Um, if you want to notify uh, of some important event, you're using a broadcast intense or a broadcast receiver to receive that information. So I know that was a lot. And if, if you're not an uh, Android developer for some time, you probably have heard some of these components for the first time. Um, the real takeaway here is uh, 
open your apps to be used by, by other apps or at least parts of it because that's really what, what makes Android awesome and uh, can give real good user interface, uh, um, user experience. Uh, the apps that are very extensible are also very popular uh, amongst users. Uh, so do it. Okay, and that's it. If you have any questions, uh, I'll be happy to answer them or try to answer them. So, any questions? Um, it might be that I'm too lazy to uh, build an user interface, and uh, but I have great ideas about uh, data that I want to make accessible in a content provider. Can I just build a content provider and expose that, and then somebody from the audience comes along and builds this great service uh, customer some activity that does stuff with my data? You can, but you have to tell people you have this great content provider that provides some kind of data, and you need to fill the content provider with data, so you at least have to have some kind of backend, you know, to fetch data from a website or whatever. So you probably need basic UI to input some login credentials or whatever. I, I'm not sure. Do you have a certain use case in mind or just want to expose data? That's good. That's the spirit. <laughs> okay. Who of you uh, is an Android developer and has published an application? Okay. And who is exposing some kind of data to other apps? <laughs> okay, one, that's, no, two. Very good. Shame on you. Um, what data? Okay. Is, is it confidential? What kind of data you expose? No, we are. We just share. We just share the files to um, to other apps. So we need to expose uh, an option using the content provider to open an input stream. Okay. Well, that's a start. Uh, on that note, uh, KitKat, uh, the new Android version, uh, has a new framework to expose data. So, for example, the image gallery can can hook there. Um, Previously, what you did, if you want to, say, attach a file or some kind of content to an email, you say, uh, attach content, and then this pop-up will, will ask you, you know, which app to use. Uh, you select the app, and the app will display some kind of uh, user interface where you can select uh, that piece of content, and it will be delivered back to you. Uh, in the new Android version, uh, the user interface to, to select that content is provided by Android. And some of the component, uh, components I, I talked before I used to, uh, you know, make this stuff work in the background. Um, you can write data providers to, s to say, I support this kind of content in this kind of directory structure, and uh, the Android UI will display it, and you can select it and send it back to the user. So I think that's a really cool addition. And if you already allow users to uh, select some kind of uh, content from your app, which I guess are only two people, uh, you, you should consider implementing this new interface so um, you show up in, in, in this new uh, user interface. Are there any other questions? Sorry, so the question was, what's the second data? I'm oh, okay, I think it was you. Do you want to shout it? I can repeat it. <laughs> Not really, you don't want to shout or you don't want to tell? Okay. OK, 
Okay, so he doesn't really want to tell. <laughs> I, I've shortened the, the answer for you. Uh, th there was a question? Um, yeah, not really a question, but maybe something for discussion. Um, while it's very nice to, to work with other applications, uh, I made the experience quite often that it doesn't work from scratch. So just ex an uh, example for simple things like sending an SMS, which doesn't really work on some devices because um, the intent is not understood by, by the system. So it, do it doesn't know what to do with this SMS and quite often which is important for this uh, start activity, the, our application crashes because some intents are not recognized or cannot be handled. And this is, from my personal opinion, a very uh, difficult thing on Android. So we quite often do this stuff on our own because we can't rely on all the thousand Android OS implementations and so on. So um, yeah, I would, as we see right now, not a lot of developers are providing data or providing activities and so on. And um, yeah, maybe you have something to say to this. Yeah, that I guess that's one of the reasons I included that. You know, make sure you actually implement the the specification, because otherwise it doesn't work and leads leads to that. Um, you shouldn't crash if another application misbehaves. So. If you, that, that, that's a general rule, I guess I should have put it also on the slides. Um, basically, uh, the other application uh, can, can dump any kind of data on you and you have a contract that says, okay, it has to be in that format, but you have to check it to make sure it's really in that format and only then use it, not just, um, not just, uh, believe them that it's in the format you agreed on. Um, th there's another point I wanted to make, but I forgot it. <laughs> I will come, to, uh, come back to that later. So are there any other opinions on that specific problem? I mean, with, with text, uh, SMS, uh, I know if you, if you heard, they, they changed stuff in, in Android 4.4, probably because of that. Yeah. <laughs> So what would you do now? So you have, you can send an SMS via intent, but Google or Android gives you also the possibility to do everything on your own. And uh, doing everything on your own, you can guarantee that it will work, uh, somehow at least, and it will not break your UI. So you, you will stay inside your um, application and the UI will be the same and the user uh, does not have to decide where to go and he maybe is not capable of actually knowing what's ha going on that he sent to another application and so on. Yeah. So in four or five uh, situations, I choose to do it on my own and only for very simple things like email sending or stuff like this. And uh, yeah, so yeah, there I are uh, APIs to do it on your own, but there's also intents, of course. Yeah, I, I guess that depends on your use case. You know, if you just want to send an email as some kind of notification, probably want to do it on your own and maybe on the in the background don't expose any UI at all but if you want the user to write an email you don't want it to do it in in your app because he's used to writing emails in the app he's using so in that case you should use an intent and if it doesn't work you know display an error message saying this is that app's fault not mine uh, maybe maybe it works with the following apps or we recommend. Yeah, as I said, it, it depends on your use case. If you have a send feedback link, you probably don't care if it doesn't really work I if you want to receive feedback by email. But yeah, OK, maybe that was a bad example. <laughs> I want to add to that um, if you are using or if you are sending SMS, then you need a, another permission that might scare people off using your application. Oh, so that, that might be a reason to use an intent for that. That's true. Another thing I should add to my slides: um, I'm I'm a fan of requesting as few permissions as possible, and if you want some additional functionality that needs that permission that maybe 10% of your users use, I rather provide another app that integrates with the the main app and provides that functionality and uh, only if users want to use that functionality of course they have to install another application 
but uh, then the main application doesn't need the permission, which might be scary. More questions? No. Then Thanks, Katie. Thank you.